Hello there. Um, yes, it's me. I'm back again. Um, I have a little interesting subject to talk to you about today. I want to talk about how to create an effective ending for your short story. So I've previously talked about the last line, but actually I'm going to talk a little bit more about the sort of last act. Um, and there's a various schools of thoughts about, uh, thought about this. Um, there are various different kinds of ending. So I'm going to go through some of my thoughts on that. Um, the usual disclaimer, these are my thoughts. These are not necessarily a definitive academic study of uh, short story endings, but this is what I've written 150 of them and I'm beginning to see what works and what doesn't work. So this is my um, take on the subject. So in most short stories, there's usually a protagonist who takes, makes a decision and that brings about a change. Um, so this can happen, this decision can happen quite early on, but the payoff is often the end of the story. So um, if you, I don't know if you've watched my um, reading of the short story Needlework, which is elsewhere on this channel. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video if you haven't. But in that story, I, um, I have my character make a decision early on. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but she makes a decision early on, which then pays off at the end. So the ending of the story is how everything goes terribly wrong or terribly right, depending on whose point of view you, you're taking it from. So uh, sometimes the, story, the decision comes very near the end. Um, a story where somebody's been pushed to their limit and finally they, they kind of just break and they say something or do something or change their mind or storm out of their job or you know that kind of story can be quite satisfying because the audience has been watching this pressure build up and then they finally get the payoff that they were looking for. Um, actually, I was thinking of a film there's actually a very interesting double ending of the film The Graduate. If you've seen The Graduate, you'll know that it ends with, uh, spoiler alert, sorry, <laughs> if you haven't seen it by now, it's been out since 1969. Um, yeah, Benjamin Braddock or something, that's the name of the character, played by Dustin Hoffman, goes to rescue his beloved Elaine, I think it's Elaine, um, Robinson, um, from the wedding that she's having to a bloke that she doesn't really fancy. Um, and he goes to rescue her and he, the ceremony has happened. She's technically been wed, I think. And then he goes and rescues her. They run out of the, uh, the church and then he hilariously he sort of bat, managed to barricade the church. So the more, the, um, not the mourners, it's a bit weird. The, uh, the people, the guests at the wedding, um, can't chase after them. And then they get on a bus and it's all very exciting, very romantic. They're eloping together. And then there's a very strange shot at the end where you just see them fall silent and I think the Simon and Garfunkel music comes on. I don't know whether it's Sound of Silence or something like that, I can't quite remember. And their faces kind of fall into this state of uncertainty, like they don't know whether they've made the right, have they just done the most amazing or the most stupid thing in their lives? Um, and it's just a great ending. I don't know whether it's in the script, but it's a great decision by the actors and uh, Mike Nichols who directed it. Anyway, you can do that kind of thing in your stories. You can have, you can have an ending followed by a, a sentence that not quite undercuts it, but offers a bit of doubt. So anyway, there is, there is a school of thought that says that this idea of always having characters learn or develop or change is essential. And another school of thought that says that's corny, you know, you think about the famous thing about the, t the um, TV comedy Seinfeld. They had a motto which was something like, no hugs, no learning, something like that. So they didn't want moments where the characters learned a valuable life lesson and there was a moral. They didn't want it all to be Aesop's fables or something. So I do try and avoid those overly corny endings where somebody you know, I don't want to bat batter the audience over the head with, with a moral lesson, as if I'm some sort of um, guru who knows how morality works or how humans should behave. So I avoid, try and avoid those endings. Um, another kind of ending is one where there's a sense of justice, or 
a very obvious lack of justice um, if you're doing a more cynical story. Um, so there's something which happens which seems just or fair, and that can be very satisfying, obviously. Or there's something which happens which seems deeply unjust, deeply unfair, but makes the audience think, yes, that's the way the world is, that's the way it works. Um, I tend to err more on the side of the former. I'm, I don't want to write horribly cynical, downbeat stories. Um, in fact, I have a whole series of stories called Tales of Hope and Connection, um, which you'll find on this YouTube channel. But, yeah, I um, very much want there to be a payoff which seems just or fair sometimes, or at least to offer the hope of justice in the future. So, in needlework, uh, there's very much an event that happens that provides a bit of justice, although, to be honest, the crime that was committed and the, th and the symbolic act that um, delivers the justice, they're not really comparable. But I think that's fair because, you know, I'm not doing an eye, it's not an eye for an eye story. It's more of a sort of a kick in the shin for an eye. Um, it's a small revenge, petty revenge, but one that we feel is much deserved and we enjoy it because it's not over the top, it's not brutal. Hopefully, if, the story, if you think the story works, let me know. Um, another ending, or obvious kind of ending, which is common in short stories and novels, you know, thrillers, particularly in crime, is the twist ending. So um, Roald Dahl is, of course, a great master of the twist ending. And there's also a story by Bernard Malamud, who's one of my favourite short story writers, um, called The Magic Barrel. It's probably his best known story. Um, the premise of the story is that there's a, a young Jewish um, scholar He's probably in his, I think he's in his early 30s or late 20s. He's already beginning to feel that he's in danger of becoming a lifelong bachelor. And although he's a bit stuffy, he wants to meet. Deep down, he does have a longing to meet someone to share his life with. But instead of doing it the normal way or the modern way, he hires a traditional Jewish matchmaker who has the magic barrel, which is like a container of photographs and effectively resumes of um, uh, Jewish girls who are available to be married in a semi-arranged way. So he he keeps having this, um, I think it's Suskind is the name of the, the uh, marriage broker. And he meets with this young scholar and he keeps trying to offer him potential women, but the scholar is so demanding, he refuses most of them. The ones he meets he's disappointed by, it's all going very badly until accidentally Suskind drops a photograph in amongst the bunch that he wishes was, wasn't there. He says, oh, I'm sorry, that's not supposed to be there. That's my daughter. No, no, no. I don't know why that's even in there. Of course, the more he protests that his daughter should not be amongst the potential candidates, the more our protagonist is intrigued and frustrated by this. And eventually, when he meets the daughter, um, it's a slightly weird, melancholy, rainy meeting, I think. Um, and both characters are kind of slightly sad and slightly lacking in something. It's quite low energy. And round the corner, Suskind is hiding watching this. And at the end of the story, it sort of suggests that this has been the plan all along. Anyway, it's a fantastic... I'm sorry, I probably spoiled it for you, but it's a great... It's a great um, you kind of see it coming, but it's great to watch it pay out anyway. Um, so I'd highly recommend you read that story. Um, another thing you can do, which is a little bit more abstract, is what I call a narrative change, where it's almost like the ending of a chapter, where we see one set of circumstances and then a little twist or a change of mood into something else, but it's not really resolved. I can just think of an example of this. Um, it sort of has the shape of entering a third act, but it doesn't offer anything as pat as a conclusion or justice or change or a decision. I mean, you might have an adventure story where characters have been crossing an endless desert 
and they finally cross a dune and see below them a huge city sprawling and maybe the it's just the idea that this city is equally vast and equally terrifying as the desert has been you could do something that's sort of thematic and symbolic in that way and definitely has a change but it's not there's no clear message or justice or anything that tidy um, and then if you really re hate all of those there's the slice of life story the um, the no ending ending where we simply pull out from a scene you might argue that Raymond Carver does that a lot we see bits of lives nobody changes nobody learns anything we just watch their lives we understand what's going on we get some deep insight and then we close the door but the closing of the door is important there must be something at the very end usually a line a just very well written line that that says okay that's enough now we will we'll draw the curtain we'll close the door we'll leave them if it just ended as if what you mustn't do is end it so it feels like you just stopped writing uh, you got interrupted and never finished the story um, the audience needs to know that it's over you know that it's time to leave yeah, the last line has to be like an effective capper, as it were. Almost like the punchline of a joke, even if it's not funny or profound. It's just a nice image or a nice moment. Anyway, those are my general thoughts on how to create an effective ending. Um, if you agree or have other thoughts or, you know, some ideas of your own, you're absolutely welcome to use the comments section. Drop me a message. Um, and... I will be back with another topic very soon. So thanks for listening. Bye-bye.